Hey, what's up guys? Sean here. In today's video, we're going to talk about my new compass, the Sunto MC2. And we're going to take some paracord and some pony beads and make a set of DIY ranger beads or paste beads. Let's get it. Before we get into why I chose this compass, Let's go ahead and discuss a couple things. There are two types of magnetic compasses. So the Sunto MC2 is what's considered a base plate compass. So this has a base plate along the compass, which you can set down on the map and you get your bearings off of. Now the other kind is a lensetic compass. That is what like the military would use. And you kind of have to know a little more formulas and be able to keep that stuff in your head to be able to use one of those compasses and the base plate compass kind of takes that guesswork out of it i'm not good at remembering those kind of formulas and stuff so this kind of compass works a lot better for me okay so i'll make it quick going through these features so we can get into making the ranger beads okay now the first feature i want to show you on this thing is this declination adjustment screw so what that adjustment screw does is it allows you to adjust your declination um, which is the amount of degrees that you have to adjust your compass to get back to north um, because of the way the earth is we're all a little you know slightly off of north and you kind of have to adjust your compass to match that or else you'll be one or two degrees or even more off and that can be a huge difference over a long distance. So all of your maps will say on the bottom of it somewhere um, the declination that you need to adjust your compass to. And if you had a lensetic compass, there's a whole formula you have to go through. So that's why I prefer to use the base plate compass. Okay, so next is the mirror with the sighting hole on it. And what that mirror does is it allows you to sight a bearing. So you use your mirror to look down at your bezel and you pick up your degrees and you sight your bearing. Now it's also good for signaling. You can obviously use your fingers and uh, signal for rescue. But it's also good for checking yourself to make sure you don't have um, any problems going on. You can see something if it's in your eye or if you get a tick somewhere that you can't see with your own eyes. Okay, so the next thing you have is a protractor. And inside this bezel, if you look, there are red lines. Those orienting lines are there to help navigate when you're using a map. Okay, so along those same, same lines, you have these nice uh, straight edges that you can use on the map to mark out your lines as you're plotting your course. Now, along those edges, you have uh, red um, scale lines, scale marks on there. And one side of it is written in miles and the other side in meters. And um, it just makes it easier for you to be able to read those when you have it on top of a map. Another nice thing about this uh, base plate compass is it actually has a magnifying glass on it. Now that helps you when you're reading a map if you're looking for map sub, uh, symbols. But also, they say it can help you build a fire. I've not tried it yet. Um, that's something I may do in the future. The bezel and the marks inside the bezel there in the doghouse, um, those are all uh, glow in the dark. So it makes it really easy to use this thing at night. Now, the last thing I'm going to tell you about it right now is this thing actually has a slope roller on it. So there's a way for you to use this compass to look at a hill and measure the degree slope on that hill so this thing right here is really really handy to have um, not just for um, plotting a course it does a lot more than just plot a course okay so that's basically all the features of this compass and that's the reason that I decided that this is the compass that I wanted because it had a ton of features um, and a ton of usable features and it was like I said it takes the guesswork out of using the compass in just a few minutes you can figure out how to use this thing and be able to plot a course on a map and find your way through there now there are a lot of things that you can do with a compass 
and you can get as deep in it as you want to get but just for basic orienteering this is a pretty simple way to get into it so that being said let's get into making some paste beads or some ranger beads and i'll tell you what those are for okay so some of the things we're going to need you're going to need some paracord about two and a half foot of paracord you're going to need some beads and now these are pony beads uh from walmart they are just you know they're in the craft section um so you can use whatever color pony beads you want for today's video we're going to be using the orange ones but i also got some glow in the dark beads um so i could make some black and glow in the dark beads not really impressed with how they glow in the dark but you know it is what it is so um if you follow me on Instagram, you'll already know that I'm going to make some of these sets of ranger beads. And for the first five people that comment on this video and say they want a set, you're going to get a set of pony beads uh, that I made here for this video. So exciting, I know. Calm down. Um, but anyway, the first five people that comment and say I want a set of those beads uh, or something to that effect. I want ranger beads. I want paste beads. I want some of your beads. Whatever. I don't care. Um, the first five people that comment on that and say that will get a set of these beads. Now, I don't know if you're going to get the camo and orange or black and glow in the dark beads. So that'll just be luck of the draw. Okay. So like I said, you're going to start with two and a half foot of paracord. I tried to use the paracord as it is and i've watched videos and people it looked like they were able to use the paracord as is i could not make it work um the paracord was just too big so what i would suggest doing to make it easier on you and it it works just as good in my opinion is to go ahead and gut your paracord cut the ends off of it pull those strands out of the center of it and just keep your sleeve um it makes it a little floppier but it works just the same so that's you're gonna go ahead and gut your paracord I suggest taking your paracord and cutting it on an angle like this and that way when you heat it up and burn it it'll be on an angle and that just makes it kind of like a uh, a little needle it makes it easier to thread through your uh, beads you want to be careful not to um, heat it into a knot there on the end of it because it's still pretty tight to go through these beads you're going to need a little lighter obviously to be able to burn your paracord and be careful do not burn yourself i don't want anybody coming back on sean and saying hey i burned myself making these ranger beads so all right, now you got your ends burned. And like I said, you're going to want to burn them on just a little bit of an angle like that. Um, now, fold your paracord in half. Get it even. And you're just going to take this top half and do just a simple overhand knot. And leave yourself just a little uh, tag at the top sticking out. And that will help you if you want to attach this uh, to something else, maybe the strap on your pack um, while you're hiking, something like that. So just make yourself just a, a little overhand knot like that. And now to start with, we're going to put four beads on here to start with. Now, pacing beads or ranger beads are just like what it says, pacing beads. So um, these beads help you uh keep track of your distance traveled now um i know we're in america and we use miles but meters are easier to track because it goes in tens so you put your first four on there if i can get them out of here And uh, your first four are 
going to represent a thousand meters. Or that's a thousand meters a piece. So it will be 4,000 meters. And your first four beads. This is a very simple project, but very useful, especially if you do hiking and backcountry camping and orienteering and stuff like that. Okay, now we got our first four beads on here. You're going to measure the width of these beads. You're going to come down that distance and then half of that distance again and you're going to give yourself a little bit of room there just a little bit of room and you're going to tie another overhand knot now what that's going to do is that's going to give you room to slide your beads down essentially like um, a Chinese calculator almost Okay, so that's what you got. You got your knot here, you got your beads here, and these will slide down. And they actually, as you can see, they don't fall. They actually have some tension to them, so they're not just going to fall down on their own. Okay, so now you're going to add nine more beads to the, sec to the bottom section here. So we're going to get nine more beads put on here, and then I'll come right back. Now we have our nine uh, beads on the bottom. Again, you're going to do just like you did on the top side here. You're going to come down this distance, and we're guessing it's not 100% accurate. You're going to go down that distance, and then maybe half, and tie yourself another overhand knot. And again, that just gives you somewhere to slide your beads down the count and keep them separated. So. A nice little overhand knot try to keep it as neat as you can overhand knots don't typically come out looking that neat but do the best you can this is for field use right this is a tool not decoration so very simple that's what you end up with now when you're hiking having this does you no good if you don't know uh, your pace count your average pace count so um in another video below, I'll link a video that will show you how to do your pace count. And it's actually very simple. It just takes a little bit of time and effort to go out, get your pace count, average them out, and then you'll know exactly what, um, how many paces it takes you to do 100 meters. So, you walk 100 meters, you slide one of these to the bottom. You walk another 100 meters, now you're 200 meters into your hike slide another one down to the bottom you go all the way through that until you get to 900 meters once you go that next 100 meters then you slide this down now you're at a thousand meters these go back to the top and you start back over so you're at a thousand meters a thousand one hundred meters thousand two hundred meters and so on and so you go all the way through that until you go through all your beads and this just lets you keep track of how far you have gone, um, roughly. So if you are plotting a map, plotting a course, um, you can kind of tell on your map and from your pacing if you have gone far enough to be where you should be at. Um, and that just kind of keeps you, you know, keeps you on course, lets you know, hey, wait a minute. I have made it 
as far as I should have gone, and I'm off track. Um, there's always going to be a variation in it. And uh, that's why you really have to average, do a good average of your pace count. So that's a very simple video, very short today. Um, so with compass, using a compass and a map, it's considered orienteering. Um, go watch other YouTube videos on orienteering. There is a lot of good content out there. Um, Corporal's Corner has some good videos, which I'll link below. Um, uh, who else is it? Um, Coalcracker Bushcraft has some good videos uh, that I'll link below too. There are a lot of good people out there that have videos on that. If I made videos on that, it would just be white noise from a small channel like mine. Nobody would ever see it, probably. So, I'll link those videos below. You guys go watch those videos and uh, leave a comment on those videos and say that I sent you over there. That would be pretty cool. Maybe, maybe we'll get you know, some contact from somebody else. So that would be really cool. Um, so that's my reasoning for buying the Sunto MC2. And that's how you make a Ranger bead set or paste beads. And uh, I hope this helps you out. I hope you enjoyed this little short video this week. Um, hopefully we'll be doing some camping pretty soon. Um, the weather's getting nice. So hopefully we'll be doing that pretty soon. If you like what you saw in this video, hit that thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button. Share this video with your friends. Everybody you share it with, um, that helps the channel out. And leave me a comment below. Even if you just get on there and comment and say, hey, like the video, or just something small, all those comments on there really help out the analytics. And it kind of pushes it out um, more to other people. So appreciate all you guys watching this video. I'll see you next time.